Fireside Christmas Short Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Fireside Christmas Short Stories by Various. The Baby's Things, A Story in Verse for Christmas Eve by Edward Abbott. 1. The work of the day had been laid aside, and now, in the edge of the even tide, she lingered a while in her favorite seat by a window that overlooked the street, silent and thoughtful, dreamy and sad, strangely so for a time so glad. But the somber hue of the dress she wore and the look of sorrow her features bore showed that it had been hers to know the weight of a father's chastening blow. There she sat, leaning and looking away, over the snow that covered the ground, over the buildings that clustered round, over the hills that rose beyond, at the lingering sunset's rich display. She watched the shapes as they came and went, the sinking sun as his brightness spent, and as she watched, the scene seemed changed, and forms and colors were rearranged, until a glimpse, as she fancied, came of the heavenly city, Jerusalem, the city that knew no setting sun, no dawning day, and no night begun the glory of god its unfading light and the lamb that was slain its radiance bright nor did fancy end its painting here the picture became more full and clear the cloudy masses that banked the sky were the walls of the city great and high in the glowing bars she would fain behold the streets of the city of shining gold the fragments outlined with graceful curl stood for the several gates of pearl and the mellow twilight that round her shone seemed the light of the precious jasper stone just one year ago this christmas eve how could the mother do else than grieve her baby died a beautiful boy her welcome care and her constant joy in an hour such as she little thought the summons came and the child was not the year had passed but sorrow still remained the mother's cup to fill and now as the festal hour returned and her heart with fresh affection burned her loss seemed greater than before her burden increasing more and more. So as she lingered and looked away at the winter sunset's rich display, the city which fancy had wrought afar out of cloudy bank and curl and bar became the home of her angel child, and the thought her sorrow in part beguiled. A moment more and the sun went down behind the hills that engirt the town, and its fading beams began to weave the welcome shadows of Christmas Eve. 2. Oh, what a flood of reflections brings the sight of a dear dead baby's things, the snow-white slips so simple and neat, Socks that would do for a cherub's feet. Blankets of flannel so soft and warm Against the chill of the winter's storm. Wrappers of muslin so thin and cool For the days of the sultry summer's rule. The jaunty cap with its crisp rosette. The quilted jacket of satinette. The gossamer veil to shield the face, the dainty shoes with their ties in place, the zephyr sacks 
with their borders bright the cloak with its cape so warm but light every possible color and hue crimson and orange purple and blue oh this was a wardrobe rich and fair as ever a baby boy did wear thus sat the mother this christmas eve bending over the bureau drawer turning its contents o'er and o'er examining every little sleeve smoothing out fondly the flowing skirts opening and folding the knitted shirts sadly caressing the empty shoes assorting the little socks by twos spreading the wrappers upon her knees stroking the blankets silky frieze and dropping on every garment dear the fresh perfume of a tender tear there they had lain from the very day that the baby died and to give away these things for some other child to wear was a thought the mother could never bear true they were useless lying there she might never want them herself again some at least she might easily spare and let the rest in their place remain what a godsend even a few would be to many a child of poverty this had always been her thought before whenever she looked the bureau through and to-night the thought returned anew as she handled the little garments o'er and seeing them placed in layers even without spot or wrinkle or any such thing smoothed as if by an angel's wing and cleansed as if by a breath from heaven she was led to think of moth and rust of thieves and fire and damp and dust and to feel that treasures are not enjoyed unless in generous ways employed there was margaret mills the carver's wife did ever one lead a harder life her husband's earnings were quite too scant to supply in full their daily want and with all her children now to rear her time of sorrow again drew near what could a baby hope to find for itself in an already crowded nest its needs would be great all hearts would be kind but now there was scarcely enough for the rest poor margaret many a heavy sigh she had uttered when no one else was nigh to think of the new life soon to come into her empty and cheerless home and she wondered what she should ever do if god should carry her safely through all this the mother remembered well as she lingered under the bureau's spell in many a generous way indeed she had proved herself a friend in need and at this hour the thought would rise as she wiped the tears from her brimming eyes how much better every way twould be to follow the bidding of charity and make up for margaret mills poor soul out of these garments a bountiful roll but no sooner did such a thought occur than a motherly instinct would demur she pitied the poor she would gladly give of her ample substance to help them live money and time she would cheerfully spend and other assistance with pleasure lend to relieve their wants and their sorrows ease but she could not part with such things as these three pondering thus the present and past as the winter twilight faded fast over the sorrowing mother's soul sleep and a vision gently stole she seemed to have gone to a distant clime back 
far back in a former time the hour was early in the night and the sky was filled with a wondrous light in the midst of which one shining star scattered its glorious beams afar while on her ear rose loud and long a joyful chorus of heavenly song she had entered borne by urgent feet a town on the hillside all the street was filled with a busy roving throng which hardly she made her way among yonder she noticed a crowded inn her ear could easily catch its din while just beyond was a rocky cave what a glory lit up its rough-hewn nave a mother was lying there at rest with a babe asleep on her pillowy breast her husband stood wondering at her side looking with love on his virgin bride it was there was no mistaking them it was the manger of bethlehem yes there were the shepherds out of the field who had left their flocks with none to shield and there were the wise men out of the east rejoiced that their pilgrimage had ceased the infant jesus she really saw was it strange that her soul should thrill with awe but strangely enough she seemed to see as she neared the sleeping child that he who should call his own neither house nor lands was now without even swaddling bands her lord in need in a moment more she had opened wide the bureau drawer and dreaming still searched its contents o'er with generous purpose and eager hands there is nothing she cried i would not spare for the babe of bethlehem to wear and she dared to hope that the gift thus made and now at the feet of the young child laid would be as worthy a gift from her as the wise man's frankincense gold and myrrh a moment more and the vision went the mother woke with a sudden start the winter twilight was fully spent the moon had begun her slow ascent and the heaven was starred in every part the scene before her had passed away with the last dull tints of the parting day while instead before her very eyes the figure of margaret seemed to rise and at that moment she thought she heard out of the stillness the heavenly word what shall it profit to say to the poor depart in peace from my generous door while notwithstanding ye give them not of the needful things for which they've sought if to one of the least of these is done naked or hungry a deed of love it is done to jesus on the throne and accepted by him who reigns above then the mother saw how her risen lord stood ready to take her at her word if margaret needed it was his need in her mute appeal she heard him plead who could resist such a tender call when the sacrifice was so very small four out from her dwelling and down the street the mother hastened with eager feet she carried a bundle in her hand the happiest woman in all the land the plentiful snow lay all around and the wind rushed by with a dreary sound but she minded neither the night nor cold her errand sufficing to make her bold 
down the snowy and blustering street past the policeman on his beat under the gas lamp's flickering light by the shop windows frosty and bright meeting many but noticing none bent on her errand of love alone over the river icy and chill along in the shadow of the mill and so at last to an alleyway dark at best in the light of day where in a tenement old and poor margaret lived on an upper floor quickly she opened the outer door and ridding her feet of the clinging snow made haste up the narrow stairs to go up several flights and through the halls she groped her way by the friendly walls margaret's door she easily found and gave a knock with a ringing sound she was hardly surprised that the first reply which her summons met was a baby's cry crowded the room it must serve for all father and mother and children small kitchen and parlor chamber and shop twas long since the floor had known the mop the plastering cracked had begun to drop the windows were narrow the ceiling low the air was close and the only light in the room was the fire's paling glow making itself by a contrast bright there in the corner margaret lay with her babe beside her born that day poor little thing it had cried with cold before it was scarcely an hour old its lot had been cast in a dreary clime and its birthday set in a wintry time and so what this mother came to bring was like a breath of the genial spring scarce a word was spoken the babe she took and pausing to give it one fond look seated herself by the dying fire and deftly put on its new attire at work in his corner the father kept and the tired children all soundly slept save one who lying upon her bed so managed to raise her eager head as to watch the movements one by one till the work of dressing was wholly done then again the babe was laid to rest close to its mother's sheltering breast and when she beheld the garments fair which her little one was now to wear the knitted shirts for its body red the socks for its twisting curling feet the snow-white slip so simple and neat and the blanket around its furry head her heart was filled with a sweet content and she said to herself the lord hath sent his servant to me this gift to bear and her quick thanksgiving to heaven went to him who had made her wants his care but none the less was a pleasure given to her who had brought the welcome gift and she felt constrained her heart to lift in a silent tearful prayer to heaven for it seemed to her that to the lord she had made this gift this christmas eve would he be true to his spoken word she asked herself and her gift receive five the hour was late and the town was still when the mother set forth on her homeward way out of the alley and past the mill and through the streets where the moonbeams lay but she minded neither the cold nor night her step was firm and her heart was light 
for she thought of the babe of bethlehem and held that her errand had been to him wondered that she had so long refrained remembered her treasures that remained discovered within a ready mind some other case of distress to find saw how it was that they truly live who freely receiving freely give and resolved that henceforth her life should be to follow the bidding of charity dear reader this world of ours is full of just such mothers and margaret's too too many life is one long hard pull to others a want would be something new here is the overstocked bureau drawer and there is the empty suffering home here of bread there is plentiful store and there is the mouth beseeching some and to bring the supply to those who need the naked to clothe and the hungry feed cool water to give from the springing well to go to the prisoner in his cell to visit the sick on the bed of pain the benighted stranger to entertain and wherever a want is seen to be to labor to meet it abundantly to do all this for the dear lord's sake and the needed sacrifice gladly make this it is surely the lord to please even if done to the least of these open then wide the friendly door freely part with the treasured store bend the ear when the suffering plead give of the best to those in need let nothing too good or too sacred be for use in the service of charity and learn as one lesson for christmas eve tis more blessed to give than to receive end of the baby's things by edward abbott